everyone greetings for the day welcome back to another tutorial on uft that's unified functional testing and uh, today we will be learning about the object repository so object repository is basically the interface between the tool and the application where you save all your object and their respective properties you store them there and when you talk about executing a particular application script then it basically the script moves towards the interface to look for the object properties and pick up the properties to compare with the the properties on the application displayed on the desktop so this these applications uh, basically comes with all these objects and you need to store them in the repository to create the interface between the tool and the application without which executing a general script wouldn't be possible but we do have an alternate way which we call it as descriptive programming which does not require the interface where you actually uh, mention all the properties in the script itself and makes uh, the script a little heavy compared to what you see now so we will be understanding all these things one after the other so today's agenda we have the object repository and let's understand a bit about it before we get into the hands-on object repository is generally of two types we call it as local object repository and shared object repository where a local object repository is an inbuilt file which comes by default when you take up a new test and also it is internally readable that means it cannot be ported from one test to another it is a read only file at any point of time if you would like to export the data or you want to cut paste the file and move it to anywhere else in a different test then it cannot be read or cannot be usable Beyond that, the extension of the local repository file is .mtr, which stands for Mercury Test Repository. And a uh, local repository is, or any repository, is associated with uh, individual actions. So, for example, if you have multiple actions in your test, like action 1, action 2, action 3, then you need to tell the repository that these repositories are supposed to be associated with them where a local repository can be associated only with one particular action. So that means to say that each action has a unique local object repository. On the other side, when you talk about the shared object repository, the shared object repository is a portable file created by you. It is not an inbuilt thing. You create it and it is shared. Shared in the sense that it can be shared with multiple actions, multiple tests, and it can also be ported. You can move the file from anywhere to any machine and any test to any other test. And you just call it, import it, associate it with the number of actions you they want to make use of. Also, the extension of the uh, shared object repository is .tsr, which stands for the test shared repository. And a shared repository can be modified uh, to a certain extent on some conditions when we say that uh, Local object repository cannot be modified. Shared object repositories can be modified, subjected. When called in a test, it cannot be modified. So when it is like called in a test, it is being usable, it will be read-only. But externally, if you want, you can modify your shared object repository. So let's quick let's get quickly started with this. So we, we will be understanding that how do we add objects to local repository and uh, how do we create a shared repository and understanding all those points which you just saw on the slideshow. So we will be taking a sample application here and uh, we'll first understand that how do we add objects to the repository. For that, you need to have your application on the screen which you want to add or which objects do you want to add. Then you need to come to the resources, object repository, or you can also come to the solution explorer and expand the action which you have by default and double click on the local, which opens the local object repository itself. Then click here in object repository. These are the test objects and these are the checkpoint section where in test objects you add the object uh, repository or you create your objects mapping here. Even if you select it or you don't select it, doesn't make a difference. By default, it will be added under test objects. So here, there's only one button enabled as of now, that is to add objects to local. And you just click on this and select the respective object which you want to add. 
So there will be a hand tool. You need to just click on that object which you would like to add and it will give you a confirmation dialog box which says that this is the object you selected. Would you like to add it? Say OK. And you would see that object being added as a part of your repository. Similarly, you can repeat this operation for the other objects which you would like to add like now we are adding password. But in case you are sure about uh, adding all the objects of a particular window, then you can click on the parent object on the top, uh, the ribbon, and click on that to select the parent object. But when you select a parent object and press OK, UFT prompts you with some options like what would you like to do because you selected a parent. So if you select the very first option, it says that only the subjected object, that means just the parent, no child objects, then you can go for the first one. Default object types, the one which are active by default. So if you see the application here, few things we do not uh, really need to have with us like this My Flight logo, this background picture, and those things. So these are called as the active things by default are called as the default object types like the username, password, OK button, cancel button, and so on. All object time means irrespective of whether it is disabled or enabled, everything which is under that window will be added completely into this. Whereas the selected object types allows you to define which class or which type of object would you like to import. So you can select only those boxes and then it can add only those things. So let's go for all object types now and say OK. And you can see everything has been included here, including the buttons, the text box and the images. So everything comes up here. And this is your local object repository. I told you it can be modified so you can select an object and click on delete button which can allow you to modify it. Further, uh, obviously this uh, file cannot be modified, oh, sorry, cannot be ported, cannot be ported in the sense it is a readable file. So let's quickly go to the path where we can really access this. So here I have uh, got the GI test tree. Um, just a moment, let me try once again. So GUI test 3 and action 1. So if you see, there is a resource.mtr, which is the local repository file. And the extension for the MTR is Mercury test repository. And as you can see that this is a non-readable file. So it cannot be moved from one test to another test. So it is a uh, read only or it's just accessible to a particular test only within that particular action. Beyond that, uh, obviously let's quickly move to the shared object repository and understand uh, what do we have here. And for shared object repository, I told you we created. So let's come to the uh, steps involved in preparing the shared object repository. So in this, you generally first add the objects to the local object repository, something like this, and then of uh, you go to file of object repository and click on export local objects. As you say export local objects, it would ask you where would you like to save your file. So you just have to navigate to, to that particular location where you would like to store and give it a name like uh, my repository. And uh, you can see the extension is .tsr which stands for test shared repository and create the file. So now the shared repository has been created, but what you're looking on the screen is the local object repository. We, because the shared object repository is an external file and has to be imported. So when you just clean this, say for example, if I have to delete this, I delete all the objects. And instead of adding the objects locally every time I take up a new test, I can now use a shared object repository, which will save my time and effort towards adding the objects every time I take up a new test. So to do that, you need to go to Tools, Associate Repository, and then click on the Add button and select that shared repository which you created and just open that. Now you have to tell the Action 1 that please make sure that you are using a shared repository and I'm not having a local object repository here. So generally, the local object repository is uh, which is inbuilt and you add objects, it can be modified. And to some extent, every test you take up every time has to be added with the objects mapping. 
So what we generally do is we create once for all, all the object repository and create a shared object repository like external file. And then every time we open a test, instead of mapping objects of different windows again and again, we can just import the shared object repository, which minimizes our effort to a lot of extent. So we just say, okay, and you can see the same objects here, but in a disabled state, that means read only, uh, and which proves the last point that this object cannot be modified. The shared object repository cannot be modified. And you can see the buttons which are like undo, cut, copy to clipboard and delete are not allowed. So as it is shared, so there will be multi -people, multiple people using this in different tests. So we are not allowed to modify the shared object repository when called in a test. Externally, we can modify it. So I'll be having a different tutorial altogether on that, that how do we, uh, you know, add repositories together, like merging the repository, comparing the repository, and also like editing the repository as one tutorial. So you can stay tuned for that. So this is what the uh, understanding of the local and shared object repositories. In case you have any more questions about this, you can uh, write it below in the comment box and I would be getting back to you. Beyond this, we'll be looking at some more options. There are a lot more things to explore one after the other. So uh, follow my channel by subscribing it and click the bell icon to get notified about the new and latest tutorial on that. So. Uh, for any further things, feel free to comment below and stay tuned for the new coming tutorials. So thank you for watching team. Happy learning.